STP building on it? Yes. Yep. Maybe that's Welcome to be. the City of Maplewood Heritage Preservation Commission <clears throat> for December 8th, 2022. Uh, Please note that we are live right now on December 8th. And first order of business is roll call. I will call the roll. Laura Koski. Present. Thank you. Bob Cardinals here. Richard Curry. Here. John Gasper. Here. David Hughes. Here. And. Uh, our staff, Joe Sheeran, is here, and Barbara is on her way. She'll be here very shortly. Okay, next we'll look at the approval of the agenda. Is anything anyone wants to add to the agenda? Uh, no, I'll, I'll add it in a different part. Is I, there went on, I went on the Internet and went to buildings department. And they have something on there that is it there, but I'll talk about it later. Okay, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Is there a motion? I make a motion. I All right. Second. All right, John makes a motion. Richard seconds it to approve the agenda as prepared. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, all voting yes. We'll move on to approval of the minutes for November 2022 are there any corrections I did see a correction under uh, approval of the minutes for October and that's uh, it'd be B instead of J Kern under C there okay. and then uh, Laura's added any other corrections anyone is there a motion to approve the minutes as corrected is there a second motion Anyone? Motion. Second. Okay, David and John. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, we have the minutes approved. We'll move on to new business, review of the founding documents. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Joe Sharon. So, um, one of the things that's in, in your packet tonight is the, the founding document that uh, was approved by City Council uh, several years ago. And this is the most up-to-date version of the uh, the ordinance that guides this commission. Um, also, we, we I don't have in our official records any cert any any certificate from Shippo or the state that says we are. That's why I printed out that uh, screenshot that shows the recognized um, commissions in the fourth congressional district for the state of Minnesota. So we we have that. Uh, if there's any other discussion that we want to have on that, I'm, I'm open to it. I will say that, uh, you know, b because we are a, recogni a state recognized um, historic preservation commission, there are several requirements that we have, one of which is uh, ensuring that the makeup of the commission includes someone who's a historian, someone who is an archaeologist, someone who's an architectural historian or, or or an architect with a historical background. So we, ha we have most of those requirements. Uh, if you don't have it, you, you, you should make a solid good faith attempt to do that. The other requirement we have is to designate or attempt to, de to designate one, um, one structure annually, which we have made a good faith attempt to do with St. Jerome's. Uh, there are, there are also uh, one of the other key elements is that we are in charge of reviewing any federally funded project that has any federally funded project has to go through what's called a 106 process to make sure and see if there are any uh, historical items that are on the property or under the property to ensure that if there are and the construction creates an adverse effect that we mitigate or or attempt to mitigate uh, the causes of that construction on the adverse effect of the designated of the, of the affected property area. So those are some of the requirements that are maintained within the SHPO office, the State Historic Preservation Office, that we have to follow by uh, the virtue that we are a recognized state historic 
or I'm sorry, a local Heritage Preservation Commission. Okay, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Uh, so we each have this for review, and if there's any questions, we can address them at next month's meeting, commission meeting. So please review all parties. I would like to draw the attention to the fact that we're supposed to have a, um, a representative to the Ramsey County Historical Society. And I think Dave, yeah, it's weren't me. you? Yes. Okay, so you're the designated representative from our commission. Yes, I've never heard boo from them, but yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay, good. Um, so, if we could look at that for a moment, those first four pages, and then move on to that where it has uh, the uh, degree of honor building. Joe, I'm going to pose this question you do to you. I don't know what the Roselawn Chapel Administration building is. I believe it's the building at Roselawn. There is, I would have to look into this further, but there is a building at Roselawn Cemetery that was, and that's one of the cemeteries that is on the list. In our 2040 comp plan, <coughs> this, the city has a list of uh, building structures, locations that would be potentially historic. Uh, the Roselawn Cemetery is one of them. I would imagine that there's probably a chapel and an administrative building on that site. Yeah, so I want to address this. Uh, uh, Richard, do you have a question? Well, I got Roselawn Cemetery is actually in Roseville on Larpenter Avenue, just before you get to uh, Victoria. Right. That's what they're talking about there. Okay. I believe that's St. Paul. That's Roseville. Roselawn's in St. Paul. Well, so I, I just want to, I just want everybody to know that um, Forest Lawn uh, Memorial Park, it's a, uh, it's a nonprofit, and I'm, I'm the president of that um, cemetery. So, um, and it isn't Roselawn, it's Forest Lawn. So I, we, we, this is confusing, Roselawn Chapel. Mm -hmm. And Joe, you just printed this out, didn't you? You just picked it. This was, is, if, this is the, if this is the document, the founding document, this is what's on our city's website. So it's in our book of ordinances. Okay, so we're going to have to address that because that, oh. that's not... Oh, I'm sorry. This, what's, what's there is, no, if that's, if, I'm sorry, if you want to hold that up. If this is what you're talking about, this, do, this document right here, <laughs> is that the document the you're talking about? Facts. I, that's that's sure. just a series of oh, your numbers. Yeah. Okay, let me just see what you're talking about. <clears throat> if that's the case, just... It's um, this one, correct? Yeah, just know that not everything on here... <clears throat> oh, okay. Not everything on... Uh, I'll just, yeah. yeah. Not everything on here pertains specifically to Maplewood. Oh, okay. The only thing I printed, I printed this out because these are all of the okay. designated areas in the 4th Congressional okay. District. As you see, you know, it's Maplewood, North St. Paul. So these, what's there is not necessarily yeah, okay. in Maplewood. Schmidt, Schmidt uh, Brewery is down on seven, West yeah. 7th Street. Yeah, so that might be the, the conflict here. Roselawn Chapel might be the Roselawn Chapel at Roselawn Cemetery. Okay, all right. It is. It's and then St. Paul Casket Company, I'd like to know what that is. Right off of 36, the Casket Company. 36. Oh, yeah, 36 yes. Yes. Is it that Willet? Or that's that? yeah. Like right. I said, the right. only right. reason why, I, why that's in your packet okay. is that was the one thing on the state of, on the SHPO office okay. that showed that Maplewood, it was the easiest way to show that Maplewood wasn't designated. Yeah, okay. City. Good enough. Good enough. Okay, so. We've got that uh, review of the founding documents. Thank you. And uh, any questions? Laura, any questions? Are you following us here? Oh, Laura? I'm following. Okay. Um, I did have a question on the founding documents where it specifies, if I can figure out where that is, um, it specifies that we should have a map of our resources throughout the city. Do we have a comprehensive map? Yeah, we do. But we don't have it probably right in front of us right now. Uh, where could someone find it? Like whoever's me. doing the, um, <laughs> what do they call it? Uh, this is the 2040 comp plan. Yeah. It may be in the, I'll, I'll look and see where, 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 where it is. Okay. It should be in the city planner's office. Yeah. 
certainly. Oh, welcome, Barbara. Oh, Hi. Okay, so uh, we have a full commission right now. So we are just going through the agenda here, Barbara. And um, we just started on the uh, new business review of founding documents. So we'll finish our discussion on that. Any questions or any comments additional here? John, as the architect, you're going to help us out here. Anything? Okay, so that's review of the founding documents. Move on to number two, 106 review for the Purple Line Project. Joe Sharon. Okay, as you know, the, the state or the, yeah, it's Metro, Met, Met Transit is in the process of creating or planning out the Purple Line. As part of their planning process, uh, they have to do updates uh, to potentially historic places that would be impacted by in your packet. Uh, we are what's called a consulting, a consulting agency. So in your packet is their review of what along the line in Maplewood would be impacted. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, it's, uh, we, we were, we're encouraged to, to read through that report and then provide any further documentation or provide any further feedback to Met Council as far as it concerns what may be affected by their project. So we don't need any action on it tonight. I just wanted to let the commission know that it's there. We have to look through it. Uh, most of the biggest piece that we have in our community, obviously, is the Lake Superior and Minnesota Railroad line, which is mostly underground, I believe. Um, there are a few places along there where we had this commission through the past president of the Maplewood Area Historical Society recommended some uh, modifications and those modifications were uh, followed or are gonna be followed in a couple of different places. Um, and that's where we are with that. So I would encourage commissioners to read through the document. If they have any additional feedback, let me know and I'll make that available in writing to the um, Met Council review process. Okay, thank you, Joe. Any questions for Joe on the, the 50 pages that are presented for us to review? And if oh, we were supposed to read it before tonight, so we could well, act on it. Well, we did. No, I read the whole thing before I got here. <laughs> That's good. And I've already made a deal that I was going to make a motion to deny the whole thing. We don't. We don't have any action on that item. Okay. According to our, our, our ordinances. Any more questions or comments on the 106 review of the Purple Line? Anyone? Okay, that's number two. We'll move on to update a Ramsey County Poor Farm Water Tower. Joe Sharon. Okay, I'm actually going to defer to, if she, I didn't talk to her about this ahead of time, but Commissioner Koski has done some preliminary research into the actual, the water tower, and she had found that uh, the water tower is, if I have this correct, the water tower, its construction, its design is consistent with when the poor farm would have been in operation, which would make it, which would possibly make it eligible to add to the inventory of the property. Uh, we reached, I reached out to our liaison at the SHPO office to also address the other concern to see if, if taking, taking it down would impact the overall designation because of place and feeling and I forget I'm saying this. Setting. Yeah, place and setting. Uh, and I have not heard back yet from our, our folks at SHPO, but uh, that's where we are in that process. Um, I don't know if anybody has any Laura, do you further. have any comments? Yeah, I'll fill in with some further info. But according to um, aerial imagery from 1945, it's already in 1945 imagery, so it's there then. I don't have a starting build date, though. It's not in the tax records for the property. Um, still don't know about finding building permits for it. 
and uh, the style would have been, the double ellipsoidal water tower would have been built in like the 1930s or so. So it could be 1930s, which is well within the period of significance for the farm on the whole. Um, but when I went to Shippo and I looked at the barn's records, because still only the barn is actually on Shippo records, not, nothing else in the farm is on the record. Um, it's never mentioned on any of the documents, none of the oral histories, not just the National Register, but anything else talking about other structures on the farm is never discussed. So I don't have any other information to give it any more significance or connect its significance to the farm on the whole. So that's all I really have about it. Um, until we hear back from Shepo about the place setting and feeling, I have nothing else to add to the water tower's significance. Well, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, and Joe, you're going to keep us uh, informed as to action on that? Yes. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay, that is number three. We'll move on to unfinished business <coughs> demo application. Joe? I don't have any demo applications for this month. Okay, that's good. Uh, number two, new board member recruitment update. And that's the PCC in your packet. We're still in the process of uh, recruiting for that position. We had an ad that went into Maplewood Living this month, or last month, we had gotten one uh, applicant. So again, this is, I think, you know, considering what this, what this is, a, a word of mouth, a person-to-person -person recruitment effort is probably the most effective uh, to try to find someone to fill the position. It's not a dire need that we fill the position now. We're authorized to have up to seven. We have six. We have plenty for a quorum. So I think we're in good shape as far as that goes. But it would be nice to have someone with either one of the background issues or someone from a community, a diverse, one of our diverse communities as well. We have some new, we have a new council member coming on who is from, I believe, the Hmong community who had to be probably reach out to and talk to to see if there's someone in it that he would know or want to recommend okay any comments anyone John I have a different thing to ask. okay so I know that back a couple years ago there were several applicants I think when David and Barbara came on yeah. that were not appointed I think we should reach back to those okay. people I know I know for certain that there was one or two people uh, and offer that or at least let them know about it. Okay, that is uh, replacement. Now we move on to any other, any questions? John, did you have some questions? Yeah, I had a question about when you were talking about some other things. <clears throat> Last year, we were doing some stuff with the waterworks and we had a bunch, a bunch of meetings online and they were going to get back to people? I never heard anything. Gotcha. The Waterworks is in the process of, I think, doing their, I think they're still in the process of going through their permitting, so I don't think they've started any, any, any work yet. Uh, but as far as they were, they were in talks of doing a video and or coffee table book is what they had talked about, but I have not heard back from them, so it's probably a good time to check back in with, with the uh, St. Paul Regional Water Service to see if 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 anything they've done or if there's anything we can help with. To add a little bit to Richard. that, where Thompson Park was, they <clears throat> put a ramp and they got parking lot in there. So they've done some work around there when I've gone by it. Okay. All right, that uh, brings us to visitor presentations, and I see TJ in the in the audience here. Uh, TJ, it's your it's your mic. Go ahead. Um, oh wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry, I should have done this. You're good. You're good. I don't get you all flustered. Um, at what point should we start looking at next year's ad for? pick the next couple buildings we want to look at. Yeah. Um, this year was kind of frustrating as far as making any kind of progress, but it mm -hmm. appears that last year we had a couple of other good targets. I mean, do we want to get that on the agenda for yeah. January? Yep. Sure. 
And in fact, um, that thing that I. Is that goal set in January as well? Yeah, well, that's, we're tasked to do that. So um, I passed out the standards of reconstruction and guidelines for reconstructing historic buildings. I think there's some thoughts there that we could review and um, maybe look at some possibilities. So I think if we could address that in January. I, we'll be I would like to see us be a little more aggressive with what we're doing yep. and not taking an entire year to get something going, but really working on a couple different ones. And I know for me it's been frustrating because the couple things I really wanted to do just haven't happened. Okay. Um, one from funding and the other one from maybe some disinterest from one of the groups, one of the places we were working on. So okay. Very good. Thanks, David. Oh, sorry. I'm going to add to that Laura? same point about um, nominating next year. So I do have a list of already considered eligible properties that we could start with. Okay. Um, and I'll bring that up for the next meeting. That'd be great. That'd be great. And Richard also. I, I have one, <clears throat> and St. Jerome's is on it, and it was put out by St. Paul and Ramsey County before we had a Historic Preservation Commission. I don't know what I did with it now. I put it away somewhere. So okay, well, that, that's good. That's uh, going to be our focus in January. Yeah. January, and also our um, oh, I put Heritage it? uh, it's here. Award. we got to address that. And is that on the website, Joe, for a call for um, applicants? We could put it on. Okay, yeah, we'll good. That's what we usually do. Okay. TJ. Yes, hello. Are you ready? I am. I am. Uh, Chair Cardinal, Commissioners, uh, Mr. Sharon, thanks for having me tonight. Uh, it's good to see you all, as always. And um, I have, uh, it's the end of the year already, isn't it? Man. Um, by the time uh, we convene again, and I see you again in January, I will be able to introduce you to our new event manager and executive assistant. Uh, so we have finished up interviews uh, out of 128 candidates for that position. Um, and uh, we're, a, we're a hot place to work. People want to work with the Historical Society. So, um, But I am very pleased with the selection we have made. And uh, while I can't quite announce uh, that yet. Next month, I'll be able to introduce you to that person, hopefully. Uh, so that's exciting. That's been a big progress and movement for the Historical Society to move in that direction. So mm -hmm. in the matter of, in, you know, just over a year, we have gone from uh, zero staff to now two full-time staff. So that'll be, that's a huge, might not seem like a lot, but it's huge for us. So mm -hmm. um, I think as, again, as the um, this jewel in Maplewood here, this this kind of hidden jewel where we're starting to grow and get out more and uh, become a public uh, face of the community, which is really exciting. So I, I'm working to continue to grow that uh, as we grow not just for a, a local um, museum and, uh, and center, but also a regional center as well. I uh, recently served on the... Um, statewide uh, programming committee for the Minnesota Alliance of Local History Museums. So that was an exciting adventure to um, be able to help set some programming uh, for the next uh, statewide history conference, which is coming up um, in April, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, the big thing we've been working on is this Saturday we have St. Nicholas Tog on the farm, which is mm -hmm. our first ever St. Nicholas Day event uh, out at the Bruin Troop Heritage Farm. It replaces our old breakfast with Santa, which was kind of a, a traditional favorite in the community, but didn't really serve our purpose of being a historical organization or an education um, edu uh, organization. Uh, and we could only really serve about a pub the public about 60 people tops for that event, a whole day event, 60 people. That didn't uh, make a lot of sense for the resources we were using. And so this year we have St. Nicholas Tog on the farm, uh, which is this Saturday, December 10th, from noon to five. And uh, we are expecting, as of now, with the weather holding, um, I imagine we will see over 1,000 people on the farm during that time. 
uh, given the, the feedback we've already received. So we will have a mini Christmas market um, out at the Bruin Trip Heritage Farm, Hay Rides. Uh, we have two food trucks that will be out there, so you can come get uh, lunch or dinner. KCM Egg Rolls will be out, and Inferno Wood Fire Pizza. Uh, the entire event itself will focus on German-American Christmas traditions. And um, so the Elizabethan singers, if any of you have been out to the... Um, Renaissance Festival, they're the Renaissance Festival's choir. They will be out singing traditional German Christmas carols from noon to two. Uh, Belsnickel, if anyone's familiar with Belsnickel, will be out at the farm um, handing out onions to bad children. Uh, <laughs> so if you uh, have any bad kids you want to uh, uh, scare straight before Christmas, uh, bring them out and meet mm -hmm. Belsnickel, uh, which is a German a traditional uh, anti um, St. Nicholas, uh, who is sent out before St. Nicholas to scare kids and make sure they mm -hmm. have all their homework done and all that kind of stuff. So we have a bell snickle. Uh, we'll have kids' crafts in both the upper and lower barn uh, from noon to five. Historic house tours every half an hour. Uh, this will be the first time we've offered house tours now in over a year. And uh, we have a brand new exhibit in the house. We have taken the living room and turned that into a 1912 German-American Christmas, uh, so you'll be able to see that. That has been exceptionally transformed uh, from what it previously looked like, which is super exciting. I actually have a, a crew over there now putting finishing touches on that. Um, so let's see what else. Um, we have a small Christmas tree grove, a mini book fair. Um, we will have story time every hour um, at 2 p.m., St. Nicholas arrives, and traditionally, uh, St. Nicholas is uh, led into German cities with a band and, and fanfare. And this year, our St. Nicholas arrives not on a horse, um, but on our 1961 Oliver tractor. So you can come uh, meet uh, uh, St. Nicholas as he comes in on the tractor uh, from across the prairie. And he will be led in by the Farmington Brass Band, the Brass Tax, this year. So we've got a brass band leading St. Nicholas in will be pretty fun. Um, and there'll be photos with St. Nicholas in the barn from uh, 2 o'clock. St. Nicholas arrives at 2 until 5 o'clock. Uh, it's a big event. It's super fun uh, planning it. I am grateful for all the help we've received from our volunteers in the community. I will be glad at 5 o'clock on Saturday when it's all done. So, But I hope you can all make it. It's, uh, it, it promises to be a really great event. And the weather looks like it's going to hold out and be pretty... Mm -hmm. Uh, pretty nice. So come on out, spend a beautiful day. It is beautiful out at the farm right now, just absolutely beautiful with the snowfall and everything. So come on out, um, join us, bring your friends, your family. Uh, so it'll be a good, really good event. So thank you, TJ. So we don't have to pay to go out and freeze. No, <laughs> um, I'm glad you brought that up. I had meant to mention that. So one of my goals um, and one of my values is that the Maplewood Area Historical Society provide pre free programming and be a free museum to the public. Um, we are the only museum around that has that model. We're able to make it work. It's not an easy model to make work, but to me, offering um, the resources, the value, um, the museum that we have to the public, it's in my mind, it's a public museum, and it belongs to the public. So. Um, I really s strive to make sure that the majority of our programming is free and open to the public. Now, we will be asking for donations. So if you get hit up for a donation, I hope you can uh, reach into your pocket and throw us a couple bucks. But um, it is, a, it is a, a, a big value of mine that we continue to provide free programming to, the, to our community. So we're going to continue to try to do that as long as we can. Thank you, TJ. Any, any comments for TJ? Anyone? Okay, so that's Saturday the Saturday 10th. at noon, noon to five. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Okay, back to our commission discussion. I think um, we're all in agreement that January will be a time to address our goals for the commission. And so if we could all think about that and, and uh, communicate with our staff, Joe Sharon, if if you have something and we'll get a I, 
think, uh, Commissioner, what might be a good starting point is we could review our goals from okay. this year. Okay. And I could send that document out. We could see where we are, what we've looked at, what we've done, what should stay for the following year, what should sunset it, and what should be enhanced. That'd be great. That'd be great. Any comments, any thoughts, or any questions? And, and with that, I will put, like I said, the 2040 comp plan does include a list of about 20-some properties that have been designated as potentially historic, and I'll make sure I include that list with the goals as well. And then let's get together with Laura and I and figure out what at SHPO she found that's in addition to what we have. Okay, good. Barbara, do you have anything to... Yeah. No, I, I still need to work on finding who the architect of the St. Jerome Church is, so I'm still working on that. Okay. All right. Richard, do you have any questions or comments? The only thing I heard is the Ramsey County Nursing Home, the county is working with the U of M for something to be put in there. Okay. That's great. John, anything? We should inform everyone that John's an architect and he brings that uh, skill to our commission, so thank you. And uh, David, do you have anything? Nothing more. And David's a teacher, so he can uh, teach. Retired teacher. Retired teacher, <laughs> but certainly is willing to help he out and never teach. never retired. <laughs> That's true. And Laura, anything to add? That's very true. Uh, it sounds like I'll follow up with Joe on potential properties to look at for next January. All right, very good. Okay, so TJ, we'll all see you on Saturday. <laughs> and invite, invite all, the, all those citizens and residents in Maplewood to the farm, Bertram I Farm. I had somebody call me today so asking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just so, uh, uh, just a comment. So the farm is out White Bear Avenue, and if you... Uh, see the mall, you would go to County Road D and you'd take a right, go east, and it's about two blocks, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just on the edge of the uh, mall property there. So, okay. Anything else? We're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>